guys and welcome to another video this video is for all my friends who are planning on doing a century ride but you just don't know where to start i've been doing monthly centuries for about four years now and i've learned a lot of things along the way uh, some things have worked and others haven't i have it pretty down now i would say but i still make a lot of mistakes but here i will share with you 10 things that have helped me in making my rides a lot more enjoyable my number one suggestion is to plan a route i suggest you sit down and map it out route it out make sure you know where you're going a lot of us like being very spontaneous and go where the wind takes us but i believe that planning a route is very essential when it comes to writing a century it's kind of like the umbrella rule it covers everything from what to wear what to bring how much food to eat planning a route will help you determine all those things number two food the most important factor of planning your century ride never allow yourself to get hungry at any point of the ride because if you do you will be setting yourself up for the path of no return literally like you won't be able to return home because you'll be so hungry you're just gonna suffer this is what the cycling community calls the state of bonking so just make sure you eat enough and have a bar each hour and that's what i love to do not leave your trash in the mountains bring it back home throw it in the trash always bring more than you think you need make sure you eat a big breakfast before your ride whether it is a big nice and juicy smoothie with a lot of bananas or maybe some oatmeal something that'll keep you full for a while and when you come home make sure you have something ready made maybe some juice or pre-made date balls or whatever it is but have something because you're gonna come home and you're gonna be hungry and once you shower and change you can finally make some nice warm dinner a lot of people out there do intermittent fasting and they can go out and ride for hours without anything in their stomach but i i can't do that i love my carbs so i need to have a lot of food before i start riding if I don't eat in the morning, I just feel kind of lazy and sluggish. So I want to have energy. So I need those carbs in my system before I start writing. Number three is water. Maybe just as important as food. Make sure you have a lot of water. You need to stay hydrated throughout the ride. Since you've already planned your route, you will already know if there are any hydration stops throughout the route because if you're going to be out in the forest or in the middle of the mountains and there's no water you need to come prepared so for that you can bring something like this a hydration pack i don't really like wearing um, a hydration pack because it makes me feel really hot and i get really sweaty so i make sure to bring a lot of water my bicycle only has two water bottle mounts so i can't put any additional ones but if your bike has more mounts make sure you use those <laughs> if worse comes to worst you can always bring a filtration system so this is my sawyer and you can just you know throw it in your jersey and you can filter some water from a lake or a water fountain or whatever that'll prevent you from bonking as well numero cuatro if you're watching this video you probably already have a kit and you are probably already a cyclist. If you are not, and you are planning on doing your first century, but you're a beginner and don't have all of the cycling clothes, I would suggest you invest in some good cycling shorts. These are a very important piece of clothing because this will prevent you from getting saddle sore. This just feels like a cloud. You need this. I love them. They will be your best friend on this ride. If you don't have padded shorts, you will end up with huge saddle sores and you won't be able to ride for a while if you have those, trust me. Now for the upper body, you're gonna want something light. It doesn't have to necessarily be a cycling jersey. You can wear a quick dry shirt. I do, however, prefer wearing cycling specific jersey because they are super light and breathable and 
they have back pockets or they usually have back pockets and this is super essential because you can put all of your necessities all of your snacks and your phone and anything that you need right away something that we often forget is that there could be a 20 to 30 degree even 30 degree difference in temperature from here to the mountains so we take the necessary clothes for the temperature down here but then we're up there and it's snowy and cold and windy and so you have to take that into consideration before you go for a ride number five this one is one that i have adopted recently and that is stretching and doing my glute activations i tend to get really horrible back pain lower back pain if i do not stretch or do my glute activations so before i go on a ride i make sure to do at least five minutes of stretching rolling and using my bands a little bit just to get the whole area a little bit warmed up and activated before putting such amounts of strain on the body make sure you wake up early this ride will probably take you more than five hours depending on where you ride and you need to have enough time in the day to complete it before it gets too late unless you want to ride in the dark then go for it go with a friend you want to have somebody to chat with so that time passes by faster so take um, your boyfriend or your best friend or a group of friends it'll be super fun to just share this long intense ride with somebody you like and you know you can have fun and share snacks it's definitely way better than riding all by yourself for a hundred miles number eight safety now this one is very self-explanatory but you know you're gonna be really tired so sometimes we're in the zone and we forget to be really aware of our surroundings be cautious of either cars motorcycles sometimes they go by so fast when you're going on those uh, mountain roads so just be really careful watch out for pedestrians and for wildlife just take extra precaution be sure to bring simple tools your allen keys extra tubes extra co2 canisters or a little pump patches all these things are very necessary just in case you get a mechanical or you get a flat or whatever make sure you know how to fix a flat there are some really good youtube videos or maybe i should make my own video on how to uh, fix a flat let me know if you guys would like to see that and we've reached the end of the video with number 10 any other essentials that you might need hand sanitizer because sometimes you have to go in the wild toilet paper put it in a ziploc bag else what else yeah phone external charger and if you can think of any other things that i forgot please let me know down below and i think that's it i think we've covered all of the things that we need to have a successful 100 mile ride thank you so much for watching i hope this was helpful and i'll see you guys out on the road bye bye